I've lived here my whole life. I made a mistake. Now I, re I did my time I'm trying to rehabilitate to society. I paid my debt to society, but yet I'm getting charged for immigration at the same time getting charged with criminal conviction. But yet the, the same conviction I have two different charges. Is, uh, one of a growing number of uh, immigrants who are being increasingly uh, targeted for uh, the practice of double punishment, which is. Um, a pro uh, process by which pe uh, people who have already served their time in the justice system are al also find themselves being stripped of their status and deported. Um, GPAN's case also is occurring uh, is also occurring in a context um, where new citizen uh, citizenship laws are being proposed, where um, people who are born here may no longer be automatically accorded citizenship, and we believe um, that his case is, is part of an effort to set a worrying precedent um, in this respect. There's no other individual like my case. That this case is setting precedents, and for the deportation aspect, people are shocked that. I'm getting facing deportation, and it's worrisome for other individuals in terms of if I'm facing deportation and I'm born in Canada, what would happen to their kids if they're born in Canada and they don't have Canadian citizenship? Mr. Bidlakati is now living under deportation order to India, a country where he's never lived, he's not a citizen. Everything is a battle with them. Once you do with immigration, you, your, your constitutional rights are not really given to you. you have, they treat you like you're a second-class citizen. And how can you get charged for, same, for the same crime twice? You get charged with a criminal offense, and then immigration charges you with serious criminality. So you're, getting, you're doing two charges for the exact same offense, and you're doing time for both of them. The worst thing about it all is that immigration, there's no set times. It can go for years and years and years. With the criminal aspect, you know that one day you'll be free and, and your time is done. You pay your debt to society and try to move on in life. With immigration, they don't allow you to do that. And the fact that Mr. Trudeau is not standing up on their behalf, is not standing up on behalf of Mr. Bidlakati, is, um, is something that shows we feel lack of respect for people in the neighborhood um, and lack of uh, courage to take a position in an extremely important debate that's becoming more and more important, which is about who gets citizenship privileges and narrowing that group increasingly. Immigration law hasn't got better. It actually got much tougher and much more inconvenient for an individual. I have other things to do, unfortunately. I do get your message. I know I understand the importance, and I know I know how it feels like when you're a militant, when you have something that you believe in. And you no. Do you, do you know what it feels like? Yeah. Can do you know how it feels like? I'm not, saying, I'm not saying I don't know your condition. I, I, I never lived that. Didn't I? Moving forward in life, I had to go for a detention review to get my condition reduced because I had 99 curfew, sign in once a week, and I had to follow all different types of conditions. One of my conditions were if my parents had to sign some kind of document that CBSA wanted within 24 hours and they refused to sign these documents or provide them with the documents, I would get breached. It's basically having me on conditions as well as my two parents. These are the type of conditions I have. So a simple phone call, which is less than two minutes to call and talk to someone on the phone. It doesn't hit that long. Yeah, I understand that, but it's not going to happen today. I said that already. Um, I'm not like, coming back on my decision. Good to see you. S'il vous plaît, je vais demander de sortir sa carte là maintenant, s'il vous plaît. I actually even told her we're coming today. <laughs> That's how rude this is. <laughs> Talk about the MP in your writing. Yeah, I'm uh, Pierre Palavier. We went there with the, with the support committee, he refuses to meet us. His letters, refuse to pass back. The only simple response is that we can't uh, do nothing in your case. And that, that's bottom line. Canada's doing this to individuals. They're increasing uh, work permits and by getting individuals to come to Canada, but they're not increasing permit residency, they're not increasing refugee status, and not increasing asylums. So all the way across the board, it's gone downhill, not up, but how they frame it, the conservative frames it, that they're doing a good job and things are increasing so over and so over. So in my opinion, the tactic of what the government's trying to do now is just ideally to take away everything from immigration and just do a complete rehaul of the system to benefit the conservative government agenda mm -hmm. and deport individuals that are committing crime or deport individuals that they don't, they don't feel that are suitable or not paying enough tax or not doing, uh, in their eyes, what any other individual should be doing. No one, no one is illegal.